Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today we're going to be giving you 7 tips to help you survive the ARC. This video is geared towards beginners and intermediate players. If you haven't played the game at all and don't know where to start, check out my beginner's guide and come back to this video. Before we jump into these tips, I want to let you know I stream ARC every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday as well as variety content on Sundays and Tuesdays. All that happens on Twitch at 8pm Central Time. I'll leave links for that in the description if you're interested, otherwise, let's jump into the video. The first tip I want to talk about today is the utilization of farms. Farms are pretty underrated in ARC for whatever reason, but they'll definitely help you get the items you need to craft new recipes while keeping up with the high demand of narcotics and medical brews your tribe may need. Not only that, but farms are an absolutely fantastic way to begin getting kibble for dinos. There are three different sizes of crop plots you can get, small, medium, and large. Large crop plots will produce higher yields and be able to grow you whatever seed you need. They do take more resources, but I don't see a purpose behind getting anything smaller than a large crop plot other than saving some space. Crop plots require irrigation and fertilizer to begin the growth process. You can use your poop and your dino's poop to fertilize your crop plots, but that's pretty inefficient to be honest. You can get yourself a dung beetle, put it on wandering, and give it all your poop so it can make you some fertilizer. Additionally, you can use a toilet to make fertilizer, but I find having a few dung beetles around is an easier way to get enough fertilizer. Since crops require irrigation, you're going to need an irrigation pipeline to keep your plants healthy. These are pretty simple to make, but they're a bit tedious due to ARC's snap point mechanics. If you do plan on making a farm, I personally recommend putting said farm inside a greenhouse. Using a greenhouse can give you up to 300% crop growth speed if used properly, and it'll make your life easier when you need special recipes in a pinch. The second tip I have for you today is about loot drops. Loot drops are all over the place, and you can find a ton of really good gear in them. I find that a lot of new players won't take the time to locate these drops, which means they're missing out on really high quality stuff. Of course, you have to be at a certain level to get certain drops, but as time goes on, you'll be able to access more and more of these loot drops, which will end up getting you better and better gear. Make sure you loot these drops as often as possible. The difference between a primitive crossbow and an ascendant crossbow is immense and can save you lots of time and resources for your next goal. I've found that caves and ocean drops give access to higher quality loot like better flak armor and better guns, so make sure you're exploring thoroughly to get everything you can. When it comes to loot drops, the color matters. The quality goes from worst to best in this order. White, which unlocks at level 3, green at level 15, blue at level 25, purple at level 35, yellow at level 45, red at level 60, and deep sea at level 80. Both caves and the deep ocean are very dangerous places. If you've never been deep within either of them, make sure you check out my caving video and my ocean creatures video before you die an avoidable death. The next tip I have for beginners is to tame a shitload of dinos. If you have under 100 hours in the game, I recommend taming basically everything you see until you have a really solid grasp on which dino does what. Dinos are the key to success on the arc, and you're not going to survive long without them. I always recommend that beginners start out by taming a triceratops, then working towards more difficult tames. But there are a lot of tames that'll give you huge advantages beyond just a triceratops while still being relatively easy to tame. Raptors in a pack are super useful and can help you traverse the map with some safety since they're quick and able to deal with a lot of creatures you'll find on the map. Another really good starter tame is the horse. The horse acts as a mobile mortar and pestle while also being able to slowly knock out other creatures you might want to tame. They're also usually faster than you and can outrun a lot of the things you'll want to outrun. Eventually you'll get yourself dinos that can carry around other dinos like the Argentavis or Quetzal to make resource gathering easier as well as making travel faster. Don't be afraid to tame some of the really powerful dinos you see around the map. There are loads of trap designs that you can use to make taming the big ones really easy. I use this trap for medium sized dinos like the Therizinosaurus and this trap for large dinos like the Rex and the Bronto. I highly recommend trapping anything you're trying to tame, even the Triceratops. It keeps you so much safer and can give you a huge advantage during the taming process. Anyway, if you're looking for taming tips, I have a video for that. Many dinos you'll find around the map are really good at one thing. For example, if the Anki specializes in gathering metal with a 75% weight reduction, 
The Dodicarus specials in gathering stone with a 75% weight reduction. There are all sorts of dinos just like this out there that can really make life easier when you're surviving, but those are really obvious tips that pretty much everyone knows about. What I really mean by dino specialization is using dinos with multiple specialties in different ways. Like the theory, it can gather berries and fiber quickly, and it can gather wood and thatch quickly. It's also a pretty powerful tame that you can use to raid bases and beat bosses with, as well as just use it for general protection throughout the arc. When you find dinos that are good at many things, like the theory, get a lot of them and make one your berry and fiber collector, while you make another your wood and thatch collector, and then, you know, use another 2 or 3 or 15 for raids and bosses. If you are trying to do a boss, then you'll want a ton of dinos with the same stats, particularly high melee damage and health, but that's a conversation for another video. The next tip today is about resources. On every map, there's usually a place to find valuable resources that you'll need in great abundance. Things like crystal, obsidian, cementing paste, and silica pearls are things you'll need all the time. You'd be wise to find these locations and collect their resources as frequently as possible, especially if you're playing on official, since other people will want to collect those resources too. Be careful if you're on official though, because there are a lot of people that patrol these locations just to find you and kill you. But either way, they're really great spots. Take Ragnarok for example. There's a long line of silica pearls through this river that are pretty safe to collect and will get you stacks of silica pearls to make electronics. There are also these beaver dams that'll provide you with thousands of cementing paste in one trip that'll help you make metal structures, polymer, and explosives. These are some of the most valuable resources in the game, so getting them in abundance is going to make crafting important items less of a pain. I recommend checking out the Arc Wiki again if you're wanting to find an abundance of resources on the maps you prefer. But exploring the map is a fun way to find cool base locations as well as these high value items. We're on to tip number 6, which is exploring caves. Caves are dangerous locations, absolutely chock full of valuable resources and high level loot drops. Not only are these caves a really good way to keep yourself interested in ARK, but you can get so much value out of them. You'll find that there are caves that are completely empty, just hollowed out pieces of land that are good for building a hidden base. There are other caves that are much more important, however, like progression caves. Progression caves are caves that hold artifacts that you'll need to collect in order to beat bosses and unlock tech gear. There are some caves that require you to solve challenging puzzles before moving on and finding the artifact. This cave on Ragnarok is a perfect example of that. You have to press all these buttons in a certain order to unlock a door, and once you do that, you have to figure out how to get past this statue that throws fireballs at you if you step foot in its area. As you can imagine, the loot in this cave is great, mainly because you get artifacts that I mentioned earlier. Not all progression caves are puzzles, though. Many caves require you to use grappling hooks and parachutes to get around. Others require you to swim underwater to find the treasures within. Most progression caves have many loot drops that I recommend taking the time to collect. If you don't remember from tip number 2, loot drops can give you some pretty spectacular gear that'll give you an edge. The last tip I have for you today is about exploring the ocean. The ocean is vast, it can sometimes feel bigger than all the land on the map combined, which discourages a lot of players from exploring. Not only that, but the ocean is full of some of the most savage creatures you can imagine, like the Tusotuthis, Piranha, and Megalodon to mention a few. As you can expect, there are a lot of high value resources to collect in the ocean given its difficulty, but expect to find creatures in the depths that'll help you greatly when you're exploring. The best loot drops can be found at the bottom of the ocean, so getting down there should be a mission of yours if you're trying to be the best player on the map. There are loads of dinos you can tame on land to help you even get to the seas, like the Beelzebuff, the Sarko, and mainly the Baryonyx, and I recommend using these dinos as your first mounts to get your feet wet. <laughs> Getting these dinos and moving on to bigger dinos throughout the depths will make it so easy for you to get to these drops. Not only are these drops awesome, but the amount of players that just don't explore the seas is kind of ridiculous, so the ocean is a really smart spot to build a base. Just get yourself some scuba gear and you'll be able to survive down there pretty easily. Some of the best caves are located underwater too, they look so cool and there are a lot of unique things about them. I'm actually not going to give anything away though, because I want you to go out there and explore. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you found the content helpful, and give the video a like. Friendly reminder that I stream ARK every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8pm Central Time on Twitch. Variety content on Sundays and Tuesdays. We'll see you in the next video.